Welcome to East and West, your dose of uplift, encouragement, and inspiration. With Craig Demo and Chukwuenye Anwoha. East and West. Here we go. Well, God bless you, and I just want to thank everybody for joining us once again today for East and West. This is your dose of uplift, encouragement, and inspiration, and we are so glad to be with you today. I am Brother Craig DeMoe over on the West Coast, and I'm joined by my good brother and companion in the faith, Dr. Chukwunenye Anwoha on the East Coast. He's in New York, and he is originally from Nigeria, West Africa. God bless you, Dr. Chukes. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank you. God bless you. My sympathy over the demise of your brother. My heart goes for you and uh, my prayers and uh, my thoughts. Everybody's praying for you. Thank you. You know, and I've had so much assurance in the last few days. I I just want to tell everybody that uh, has prayed for us for anything. We really, really do appreciate it. And, you know, we really couldn't go on without the prayers of the saints. I know you need to pray yourself, but you're not an island. And uh, yes, um, about a week before this recording was made, actually it was a week ago, we were recording this on Wednesday uh, before the broadcast is aired, and uh, my brother passed. He was uh, older than me, and I'm the only surviving sibling in that whole bunch, uh, originally four. So uh, praise God, but we're going to go on for Jesus and uh, so we're just kind of working through some things and we're going through this again. I lost my mother, of course, back in December. And so we're going through this once again. But uh, God's grace is sufficient. And uh, thank you for your prayers again. Praise God. Well, listen, let, let's uh, turn our attention toward the listeners. Uh, you know, we've been in this series and we've been talking about uh, the different ways that Jesus has shed his blood and the fact that it, what what his blood being shed means is your full redemption, your complete redemption. Praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, there's six parts to this series. We're going to end up uh, next week uh, right at uh, communion. Uh, sorry, right at at uh, Easter Sunday or, or Resurrection Day Sunday, I should say. And uh, so praise God, six parts. And this is part number five. And today we're going to talk about this. Jesus' broken heart means your joy is full. Praise God. Amen. You Amen. see, every, everything Jesus, every time Jesus shed his blood, you know, he was purchasing a part of your redemption. And that's so exciting, you know. And uh, it's like in the first episode, we talked about this, <clears throat> that in Gethsemane, your will was redeemed. Praise God. And, and the second week, we talked about your health was purchased at the whipping post. That was a wonderful uh, time together and a, a great episode. And thirdly, we talked about the crown of thorns means you prosper. Praise God. Hallelujah. The curse from having to live by the sweat of your brow is taken away. And last time we talked about this, Jesus pierced hands and feet, redeemed your works and your walk. Praise Amen. God. You know, uh, I, you know, I, if I just had to guess right now, uh, you know, this is East and West number 51, by the way, praise the Lord. We're coming up praise. on one year of East and West and we're into April already, but praise God. If I had to guess on what was the very best episode we've ever done on East and West, I'd have to say last week, I really would. And uh, maybe this week will be, I'll say, say it's this week, but for right now, I'm going to say, if yeah, if you don't have time for anything else that you want to review, go back and look at uh, Jesus pierced hands and feet, redeemed your works and your walk, and that was uh, number four in this series. So praise God. Hey, uh, why don't you open us up with prayer, Doctor Chukes, and then we'll get into it. Hallelujah, Father, in the name of Jesus, we consecrate to God this hour and decree that yes. every that our voices will be blessed. Yes. You will move in your power. You will move in your glory. You will heal. You will deliver. You will set free. This is an hour of miracle for somebody yes. under the sound of our voices. Yes. 
That shall be a performance of that which yes. you have said Thank in you, Jesus' Lord. mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Lord. That was powerful. Thank you Praise. so much. Praise God. Hey, I want to remind everybody that next week on Resurrection uh, Sunday, most will be seeing it on that day, I think. Uh, depends on when they hear it and how they hear it. But uh, we're going to be celebrating the communion table. And uh, praise God. So come with the communion elements ready, if you can, please. Uh, you know, get that uh, wafer ready or that bread and get that juice or that cup, whatever it is. And uh, just come ready to celebrate the communion table. And uh, that, that's going to be a powerful time. So praise God. And uh, listen, we want to take care of one more thing before we get into the meat of the message today. And that is, we want to show you uh, this little promo on Feed the Children. This is an ongoing pro program. And uh, we want you to know about it. And uh, we're going to show just a quick promo on it and then show you how you can uh, be a part of this wonderful way to be a blessing and be blessed yourself. So watch this right now. Ambassador Ministries International is partnering with God's Cover Churches to feed hungry children in Nigeria, West Africa. The need is growing. But God's Cover Churches is feeding hungry kids every week with plans to run a feeding center every day as this project expands. Now, we found that a little money goes a long way, but we need your help. Several thousand dollars of matching funds have just been offered to help with this program. And this means that for every dollar donated, it's instantly doubled. For example, a gift of just $50 instantly becomes $100. $100 becomes $200, and so on. To help feed the hungry, go to ambassadorministries.org, click the donate button, find the button that says Nigeria, and give a gift of any amount. May the Lord bless you richly for your support. Praise the Lord. I hope you enjoyed that. I know I did. Praise God. And we're going to try to make that even better. But be that as it may, uh, there it is for you. There's the, the information. And Dr. Chooks, uh, I'd just like a little bit of an update on what's going on over there in Umaya. And, uh, you know, tell us about the church and about the church growth. I know you've been kind of monitoring progress there and uh, what impact it's having on the community. Yeah, praise the Lord. We started this program uh, four weeks ago, to be precise, and uh, God has been moving in a tremendous uh, way. Um, we're getting people off the streets and uh, people who ordinarily, um, some of them, they've given up on them. Some of them were doing drugs already. Some of them were, you know, just at loss. But uh, right now, they come to church. Yeah, They are looking forward to coming to church every Sunday. So we give them the word of God and we serve them lunch yeah. every Sunday. The Lord laid it in my heart and said we should do it for one year, Greg. Praise one God. year. Wow. Every single Sunday. The church was 23 members before we started. Now it's over 120 members. Mm. And not just, you know, the number, but people are getting committed and dedicated, devoted to worshiping the Lord and, you know, helping in the church is amazing. So uh, among that number, we have a large number of young people mm -hmm. from the age of six to the age of 25. They are almost like 90%. Wow. And this, this audience is people that need our attention more than ever before. Mm -hmm. Because for a better society, better community, you must raise up a child in the way he should go. Yeah. So we have one boss that goes like almost four or five times to bring people and to take them home. So, um, but we, we are going to get the next boss, the second boss immediately after Easter. So we're going to be having two bosses. So that will help to bring more people to come into the church. So we're also you know, going to increase because as the number increases, the food is going to be increased. 
Yeah. So, so the right now is 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 a is a blessing. The devil is terrified about it. Praise God. And uh, people are talking about it. The news is spreading, and uh, I know that it's gathering momentum by there. So mm -hmm. we are looking into a non-presidented, you know, massive zone winning. Yeah. Which is good. Praise God. So um, I am trusting God that this weekend is even going to be greater. So looking at the number of uh, plates, so we should be like uh, going over 500 plates at this Sunday. So, yeah. so which is amazing. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. Well, look, Jesus <laughs> fed a lot of people. <laughs> so, <laughs> amen. You know, and, and thank God you're willing to step out and do what the Lord told you to do. That is a big commitment. Even once a week, feeding people once a week is a lot. And particularly when you're just throwing it out to everybody, anybody who hears about it can come to church and get a free meal. And uh, that is pretty amazing. So, During the long, the long term, is we're going to be feeding them every single day. Yeah. And long term. And we're going yeah. to build a place and it's going to be the first free restaurant for kids ever. Yeah. Our area. Yeah, praise God. But you know, after you stepped out, I'll just tell you, tell folks, you know, there's something in that uh, little promo about the fact that there's matching funds available. Uh, right now, it's sitting at $7,000 just for matching funds. And by the way, folks, jump in on that. You donate $100 toward this project, which is having an impact in, on enlarging the kingdom. And your $100 becomes $200. And by the way, even $100 goes a lot, lot further over in Nigeria than it would in America. Or like if you're listening in the UK or you're listening in Australia or whatever, um, you are having a major impact through your donations. So I just want you to know that. Listen, don't ever give under compulsion. Don't give just because there's a need, but, you know, uh, we are commanded to, to uh, you know, give to the poor, to give to those that are, to give the, to feed the hungry and so forth. Those are things that Jesus did. And, um, you know, let's just take his example and let's just go for it. It's having a major impact. And I know that as the program goes, uh, you know, the, the funds will increase and God will continually supply. So we're looking forward for great things. And we just thank the Lord for your obedience. And we just thank God also for your team over there. Great folks. And they're serving the Lord with their whole heart. And we just thank the Lord for them. It hasn't been easy over in Nigeria in this season. But uh, thank God, God is raising up the people that are helping. So I want to encourage everybody, if you want to be blessed of the Lord, jump in on this opportunity, you know, be a part of this. And uh, we're not twisting your arm. We're just saying, hey, here's an opportunity for you. You want to take it or not? So Hallelujah. You, can, you can let it go, but uh, you, you will have missed it. So praise God. Jump in. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. So praise God. And, uh, you know, up, up on the screens right now are our websites. You actually could go to either one and donate to uh, either one. So praise God. There's also, uh, if you're listening uh, through YouTube or BitChute or Rumble, one of those channels, <coughs> excuse me, you can go, you can back, back this up a little bit and you can use that QR code. And you can also uh, uh, make a text gift to that number on the screen that was there. So praise God. Anyway, praise the Lord. Let's get into the message. Hallelujah. And uh, so thank God. Hallelujah. We want, we're talking this time about joy and how Jesus purchased your joy. And uh, let me just say this, that before mankind could have his joy back, we know that Adam had presence, had joy in the presence of the father as he walked with him in the cool of the day. Of course, you know, who wouldn't have awesome joy? But before that joy could be bought back, after Adam basically gave away the whole farm, you know, um, it, you know, and that had to be bought back, you know, there was a big problem that had to be solved. You see, there is no joy apart from the presence of God. There really isn't. <laughs> and in man, uh, and if mankind could not be in God's presence, 
to to uh, have really his joy fully restored and really full, uh, there was a big problem. The problem was called sin, and the sin problem had to be solved because uh, me, uh, nobody could go into God's presence with sin on their conscience, right? That had to be solved. And uh, so that had to be put out of the way. And uh, so Jesus came to solve that problem. Now, right. when Jesus spoke to his disciples, you know, at the at the, the Last Supper, he made a promise to them that was Im impossible to be fulfilled at the time he spoke it. And I'm going to read a couple passages from the Gospel of John. And it's interesting that John was the one who talked about joy. Because, And the reason I say that is because John is the guy that we refer to as the apostle of love. Okay. He was the guy that, that was the closest to Jesus. He leaned on his breast at the Last Supper, right? And he was right there on his heart. And uh, he wrote about love. And he was love motivated, praise God. And so we thank God for Apostle John. But uh, he was the guy who wrote about this. Now, when we go into the book of Galatians and we look at the list we call the fruit of the spirit, it's love, joy, Joy is right on the heels of love, right? Mm -hmm. you know, I don't think of the, the gifts of the Spirit as, as nine, or the, excuse me, the fruit of the Spirit as nine separate fruit. I think of it as one fruit with nine parts to it, right? And see, because love is given to us, love is first, and out of love comes joy, and out of joy comes peace, and you see, and, and that's the way it works. And uh, you go right on down the line. It's all connected. So uh, my point is simply this, that John wrote about this and he was speaking from a heart of love when he wrote. See, this is what John remembered, right? And uh, so we're going to read, first of all, from John 15, starting with verse 7. John 15, verse 7 says this. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Wow. That to me is one of the most powerful uh, scriptures in the entire Bible. If you abide in me, my words abide in you, ask whatever you want to. It'll be done for you. And then he says, herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. And he's talking about prayer fruit so that you so shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Again, wow. We are loved just like Jesus was loved of the Father. And then, Amen. He, and then he said, continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. And let me just say this to you anybody that would use that scripture to disqualify themselves from the goodness of God. You know, when you are in Christ, everything Jesus did, you did. So therefore you have already kept all of his commandments. Amen. Now here's where we're going. John 15 verse 11. Look at this. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and your joy might be full. Notice two joys, his joy, your joy. Amen. Your joy has been restored, so it's going to be full, but his joy is also in you. So you've gotten more than what Adam lost. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, this is good. Yeah, you know, it really is. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to go to how it was fulfilled. John chapter 19. And actually, I'm reading extra verses here for context. But I want you to see this. John 19, starting with verse 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to its, his mouth. And by the way, just to let you know, biologically, vinegar is not the right thing to give a, a, a guy who's thirsty. <laughs> okay, If you really want to hung, uh, quench thirst, you use water. <laughs> Verse 30, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, in other words, he took what was bitter 
not what actually met the need. He took the bitter. He, the reason he did that is so your need would be fulfilled. He said, it is finished. Tetelestai, finished, done with. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. He, did, he bowed his head first. He did, he, his life was not snatched away from him and then his head, head, head dropped, right? He, he gave his life willingly. He could not die until he decided to. Amen. He bowed his head, gave up the ghost. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain mm. upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for the Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken that they may, and, and that they might be taken away. This was a collusion between religious leaders and political leaders. Okay, that was what was going on. And when the two came together, then the body of Christ, uh, you know, could be put into a position where it could be put down. No different today. We see collusion between religious leaders and political leaders to try to stop the church. But the, the thing is, we're redeemed. And so if we understand that, we can't be stopped. Verse 32, then came the soldiers, break the legs of the first and the other, which was crucified with him. And when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they didn't break his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. Amen. Which meant his heart had ruptured. His heart was broken. And he saw it bear record, and his record is true that he know, knows that he said what he said is true, that you might believe. For these things were done that the scripture might be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. That is Psalm 34, verse 20. And again, another scripture said, they shall look upon him whom they pierced. Praise God. So here's what I want to say to you today. And uh, Dr. Chooks, you just jump in right after after this comment. See, if your heart is broken today, my friend, I want you to know that Jesus' heart was broken so yours would be restored and you would have his joy in you, that his joy might remain and your joy might be full. Praise <clears throat> God. Psalm 147 verse 3 says, he heals the broken in heart and binds up their wounds. Praise the Lord. And we... Uh, present to you your answer to a broken heart your answer for lack of joy that is jesus broken heart praise the lord amen praise god amen praise god hallelujah amen. you know the bible says that a broken and a contrite spirit a broken heart and a contrite spirit god does not overlook amen. so if you are somebody out there now and your heart is broken hallelujah jesus died for you glory to god I want you to know that God is paying attention to you, to every oh, yes. detail of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We started with the stages of his bleeding. He bled at the Gethsemane. Praise God. He bled at the weeping post. He bled, praise God, when his hands and his feet were pierced. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Each of them has significance. Yes. His heart that was broken. Glory to God. It is for you, for your joy to be full. Yes. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, it's, it's practically impossible for anything to be purged without the blood. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. Yes. So anything that is powerful to there is nothing that is powerful today that is not in blood. Mm-hmm. If you're looking for power, it's in the blood. So when people make sacrifices, it's not complete. It's not powerful if there's no blood in that sacrifice. Yes. Those of you from Africa and um, some part of the world where you still have all these uh, voodoo priests and all these traditional, you know, um, uh, habit doctors, you understand, you will relate. What makes their shrine powerful is the amount of sacrifice that they make on that altar. If they kill a bird, the power is different. When they kill a, um, a bull or a ram, the power is different. But what I'm trying to say is without the blood, it's not powerful. 
So you can imagine if the blood of bulls and rams, people can you know, put their faith on it, how much more you now putting your faith on the blood of the lamb. The Bible said they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimonies and they were not afraid of the death. So wherever mm -hmm. you're listening from right now, your joy is restored by the reason of Jesus going to the cross. Mm -hmm. He has nailed your mm -hmm. pain to the cross. Mm -hmm. He nailed your sorrow to the cross. He nailed your inconsistency to the cross, your unworthiness to the cross. Your depression has been nailed to the cross whatsoever. Your anger, your bitterness has been nailed to the cross. Whatsoever, your emotional imbalance has been nailed to the cross. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They are dead. Yeah. To God. Amen. And what is dead does not, my God, does not control you anymore. Praise God. So I want you to realize right now that the blood of Jesus paid for your joy to be full. And you can go on to rejoice right now. Go on to celebrate. Hallelujah. I'll thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know how much time we have, but listen to me. He was born in a stubble. His mother a virgin, raised from the carpenter's shop. His parents were poor. His people were slaves. His friends were lonely lambs. All of the powers in heaven and earth, God has invested in him. People saw the light in him and the glory of God upon his life. Yeah. He's to die on the cross, descend in the hell, meet the devil, take the keys from him. He yielded himself to the death of the cross, cried, it's finished, he slumped, he died. Yeah. And in the midst of the region of hell, footsteps were heard walking in the corridors of hell. They shut him stop when a voice rang out, a voice that rang like a bell, set and then trembles as he recognized him. Who came to deliver his own? Shut him up those gates, he cried. Don't let him ascend to his throne. The gates were shut in the face of the king to prove God's salvation and truth. But Jesus shook those gates and said, Lift up your heads, all you gates. Even lift them up your everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. The gates replied, Who is the king of glory? Hallelujah. The answer, He is the Lord, great and mighty. Yes. And battle. Lift up your heads so you get even lift them up. You have everlasting dogs and the king of glory shall come in. They get replied again. Who is the king of glory? Jesus said the Lord of hosts. Jesus is a host even in hell. Not a visitor. Not a stranger. Hallelujah. He's the host in your of your life. He's the host of life. He's, yes. He has everything. Hallelujah. And the palm of his hand. And there was a procession led by the king, shouting, Now, O grave, where is thy victory and strength? Where is thy sting? Who is this king of glory? Is the Lord God Almighty in battle, the master of the host of heaven supreme, the one that not even death could stop. Even though he was born in the carpenter's shop, praise God. It doesn't matter. Now Jesus is glorified. Hallelujah. So don't allow the devil to steal your joy. Let Amen. Your joy. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, start with a decision. You don't have to feel it first. Decide. Praise God. Decide. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, we are we are out of time. This is so rich, Dr. Chooks. Praise but God. We are out of time. And uh, listen, I, I just want to tell everybody, just mirror what the word says. Amen. Say what the word says. And you're going to see the results that the word promises you. Thank God for you. We love you in Jesus' name. And uh, again, thank you for your prayers. I just want to say this. If you're born again, you are God's ambassador. Praise His God. representative on the earth, making you extremely important. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Amen. God is glorified and the devil is terrified. Oh, yes. It's a miracle. Hallelujah. We'll see you next time. Let somebody know about East and West. And uh, come next time prepared for communion. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to join us next time for East and West. You can find our hosts at ambassadorministries.org and godscoverchurch.com. Until next time, may God bless you from the East and from the West.